Let's receive right now our fresh daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving in our heart and into your courts with praise. We call our walls salvation and I call our gates praise, Father, as we worship you and praise you and thank you that you love us unconditionally, always the same, and you chose us to be your beloved, to be your children. Father, right now we believe we receive our fresh manna from heaven, the living word of God that is actually yourself that is full of power and full of life i thank you father that your spirit is upon me because you have anointed me to minister this word that you put your thoughts into my mind and you speak through my lips your words thank you father that this word is spirit and life and it accomplishes everything that it is sent to do in each person in jesus name thank you father for every person that you have called to hear and receive this truth. Thank you, Father, that you give each one a listening, focused, attentive ear and mind and a receptive heart in Jesus' name. Now let's confess the Lordship of Jesus. Don't you just love to confess Jesus is Lord? Because every time we do, it says every knee bows and every tongue confesses that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And that's in heaven, in earth, and under the earth. So we are speaking into the spirit realm. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. Jesus is Lord of all. His kingdom rules and reigns, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Praise God. And now let's confess our reception of the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you opened my ears to hear as the learned. I thank you, Father, that the eyes of my understanding are enlightened, and that you make me a quick understanding in the truth of your word. I thank you, Father, that as this word enters into my ears and my heart, I hear it, and because I hear it, more is given to me. I receive it, and I thank you, Father, that by faith I am a doer of it, and that this word grows up in me quickly and prevails and produces in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit's been ministering to us on the power of the tongue the revelation of how important the words are that we speak and I believe that each one of you have already seen a difference as you have been acting on this truth you know the Word of God is truth and when Jesus told us in Mark 11 23 for us to have the faith of God for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things that he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. That He wrote that for you, and he wrote that for me, for us to live by. So this is literally how to live by faith. We learned in Proverbs that life and death are in the power of the tongue. We also learned that we are snared by the words of our mouth and taken with the words of our mouth. In James 3, we learned that if we can control our tongue, we can control not only our whole body, but our whole life. So we're going to go back to uh, a couple of scriptures that we've already seen but you know there's always more revelation because the Word of God is alive and powerful and I love what Fred Price said he said it's always giving birth to new to revelation it'll always build on itself but it's always giving birth because it is the incorruptible seed so in Isaiah 55 verse 7 let the wicked forsake his way 
and the unrighteous man his thoughts. So we're going to focus on way and thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. That's an important key right there, that God always abundantly pardons us. For my thoughts are not well, he has already abundantly pardoned through Jesus on the cross. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Okay, so he's telling us that God has certain ways that he operates. You know, I would say the majority of people on planet Earth think that God can just do whatever he wants to do and that he does just whatever he wants to do in each person's life and a common phrase is well everything happens for a reason and that's not true and God can't just do anything he wants to do because he is just and he is righteous and he is bound by his own word so since he has certain ways then what we need to do is find out what his ways are so that we can walk in the same ways because he said let the unrighteous man let the wicked forsake his way so we are to forsake our way and do it God's way now most of the time when people think this they immediately go to things of like drinking or smoking or something like that that is not what he's talking about He's talking about the way he operates. And then he goes on to say that so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I send it to do, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. So God, he's telling us his way is to send forth his word and that his word will accomplish what it is sent to do. For instance, he sends his word. It says he sent his word and healed them. The word of healing was sent and the word healed them. You know, years ago there was a book written that, I'm not sure the exact title, but it was something like when God doesn't make sense or something along that line and I, I just thought you know God always makes sense it's just up to us to learn how he operates because so many times things that happen are attributed to God when the truth is is um, like he says in Hosea I wrote this down in Hosea 4 6 my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge one thing that we have had a lack of knowledge in is God's ways. So when, when bad things happen, remember in John 10:10, 10, 10, Jesus himself said, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So God's will is for every person to have life more abundantly and to be totally free from Satan stealing, killing, and destroying from them in any way. That is, that is God's will. That's what Jesus said. We always have to go to what does God say. You never look at a person's experience and form what you believe from somebody's experience. For instance, I've heard you know, people say, well, so-and-so was just such a good Christian, but they died early. You don't get things because you're a good Christian. We receive based on what Jesus did and we receive by faith. The only way in the kingdom is living by faith, not by works of our own righteousness, not because we're a good Christian, only by faith, not because of our faithfulness, but because of his faithfulness. I remember uh, years ago when I had heard that Gloria Copeland had believed God and written up, drawn up plans for her mansion here on the earth and 
I heard that she uh, had built it, and I just said, Father, I am just rejoicing with Miss Gloria because she deserved that house. And immediately on the inside of me, I heard this so strong, I'll never forget it. He said, she didn't get it because she deserved it. She got it because she asked and believed for it. So in the kingdom, you receive from God because you believe, because you ask and believe, not because you deserve. Jesus was the one that went to the cross, and he was the one that made us able to receive. On our own merit, we don't deserve. We don't get anything because we deserve. And I believe the Lord will enlarge that revelation in your mind and heart because the word says in John 1 that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And we live under grace and truth and not under the law. So let's go again to Genesis 17, verse 4. God said, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. Now, always look at what did God say because he is the one, it's his word that we base our lives on. It's his word that we believe. He says, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall your name any more be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made you. He said, a father of many nations have I made you. And then in verse 15, he said to Abraham, As for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her. And I will give her a son also of her. I will give you a son also of her. So listen to God's words. He, what is he doing? He's speaking it into existence. I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. And I might add that you and I were born of Sarah, of her faith, and we are kings and priests unto God. So Sarah is our mother, Sarah the mother of grace. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? So at this point, he was not believing. At this point, he laughed. And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, your wife. So God very specifically uses his words. Now, that's a key to his ways right there. Sarah, your wife shall bear you a son indeed, and you shall call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him. Notice, past tense. I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this time in the next year. Those were God's words, very specific, and his words to call this forth. So now let's go back over to Romans 4, 17, where God said, the Holy Spirit said about Abram, as it is written, 
I have made thee a father. Well, but the scripture before that says that it is of grace. It is of, let's see, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise would be sure to all the seed. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Like him whom he believed, even God who makes alive the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. Right there, he is telling us God's ways. God makes alive the dead and calls those things that are not as though they already were. Let's do that again. God and Abram became like God. Now, we saw in the scripture at that moment, he did not. At that moment, he said, oh, that Ishmael might live before me. At that moment, he laughed. So you may have been in unbelief over some things, but you know what? You, just like Abram, can get on the word and get in faith and get your promises. Praise God. So don't ever feel condemned because you haven't had the faith to do the things that, and believe for the things that you know belong to you because Abram was there and yet God's long suffering with him he kept working with him and Abram got it because here it says that Abram like God the the King James says before him but that means like unto him like him whom he believed even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they already were. What did he do? He called, he began to call himself Abraham. A father of many nations has God made me. Not going to make me. A father of many nations has God made me. And then he says, who against hope believed in hope. In other words, against hope all natural hope that was gone. His body was dead. Sarah's body was dead. They neither one had strength to produce, uh, to reproduce. And it says that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. So shall thy seed be. You know, when God speaks, whether it's in the word or whether uh, he speaks to you, then his words are there for him to perform his words. And we find in Hebrews 12, is it 12, 11 or 12, that um, it might be Hebrews 11, the hall of fame of the faith of people where it was because God said here that in Isaac, would your seed be called that when God asked him to offer up Isaac he went back to that word and he said no God told me that it was going to be in Isaac so he reasoned it out that well then God's going to raise him from the dead that he would offer him he fully intended to offer him as a sacrifice but he reasoned out based only on the word of God that since in Isaac shall thy seed be called, that he was going to raise him from the dead. So against hope, he believed in Bible hope. Bible hope is a confident expectation of the promise of God. Well, a confident expectation based on the promise of God. The, it's a living hope. Every promise is a living hope that gives you a confident expectation in God fulfilling that promise. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. So how to go, what is a way, one of God's ways? Calleth those things that be not as if they already 
were past tense. And I've shared this with you, but you can go through the epistles and see what God has called you. And if you do like Abram did and start calling yourself what God called you, then you know what? Just like he became the father of many nations, you will become more than a conqueror. You will become an overcomer. You will become uh, the righteousness of God. That's who God calls you. You will become that new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things passed away, all things become new. You will become the redeemed of the Lord. It will manifest in your life as you call yourself what God has called you. And notice they're all in the past tense because it was based on Jesus' finished work on the cross. So we on this side of the cross, we are totally new in God. We're not just born again. We are what the Word tells us we are. In God's mind, that's what we are. But we have to start calling as if it already were. In Isaiah 46, verse 9, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. So you might worship him and say, Lord, you are God. You are my God. You are my Father and there is none else. Always acknowledge him as your mighty God and there is none else. Don't look to yourself. Don't look to other people. Look to the one who birthed you, your mighty God, and acknowledge him. There is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. Declaring the end from the beginning. He said about himself, I declare the end from the beginning. So he speaks the desired end result from the beginning. And, the th and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Then let's go over to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And then he goes on to say, and walk in love. But that word followers means, in the Greek, imitators. So, this is one way we can imitate God, is by calling those things that be not as though they were, and declaring the end from the beginning. That is the primary way that God operates. And for us as His children to be like Him, then we must operate just like He does. Jesus himself said, is it not written, you are little gods? So God birthed little gods. Now we're not saying we are God. We are little gods. We are God's children. And we rule and reign according to Romans 5, 17. It says that um, they that receive the abundance of grace the abundance of God's favor, the abundance of God's unmerited favor, and the gift of righteousness. And that's huge in itself, not basing anything on your works of righteousness, but basing everything on the gift of righteousness of His, that's His righteousness, shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. And that's God's will for every one of us. The Word also says to be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And it's all good. It's all good. He said in Jeremiah, he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good and peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. That's God's will for you. So let's go to three scriptures where he tells us what to say. In Joel 3.10, Beat your plowshares into swords, 
and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. We covered that a while back, but it's something to keep at the forefront of our mind. Let the weak say, let the weak say what? I am so tired. I am so weak. I just don't know if I'm going to make it. No. He says, let the weak say what? Call those things that be not as though they were. I am strong. And so looking into Ephesians by the, where the Holy Spirit uh, through the Apostle Paul said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This is not our strength. This is his strength in us. So let's just do that and do that continually. Don't even wait till you, till you feel weak. Get up in the morning and say, Father, I thank you that I am strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. And even on the inner man, because this is where strength is so needed. In Ephesians 3, he says that we are strengthened with his might by his spirit in our inner man. So Father, let's just say this together. Let's confess this by faith. I thank you that I am strengthened with your might by your spirit in my inner man at all times in Jesus' name. And let's confess the other one in Ephesians 6. Thank you, Lord, that I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then there's another one in Colossians uh, that I didn't write down. Then let's look in Job 22, 29. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, there is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. So when a person just feels down, depressed, uh, dejected, like no hope, then you know what he said? He said, say, lifting up. Not, I am so depressed. And I know the temptation is there, but don't give the enemy your words. Let's act like God and call those things that be not as though they were and say, I am full of the joy of the Lord. I am full of the gladness of God. I am lifted up. I am seated with him in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might in every name that is named. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am lifted up. So call it, and then that's what will take place. But when a person talks about how depressed they are or how um, what a failure they are or their feelings of uh, hopelessness, then it because the laws are set up that you call things that be not as though they were, then it will, that will magnify. But when we act like God, it will change. It will literally change you. As you say, Father, I thank you that instead of mourning, I have the oil of joy. Instead of heaviness, I have the garment of praise. And that you have made my wilderness like Eden my desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness are found in me, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. And so we call the thing that is not as though it was, and then it becomes. Then there's one more, Psalms 107 verse one. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Start your day every day and even during the day. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. So we give thanks to him because he is good. And I always say, you are good to me and my family. For his mercy endures forever. Then he says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom God hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. So he tells us, because we are the redeemed, that we are to say so. That we are to say, we are to call ourselves the redeemed of the Lord. Redeemed from what? Here he says, from the hand of the enemy. So we are redeemed from uh, Satan who has been defeated. We are redeemed from the curse of the law, according to Galatians 3.13. We are redeemed 
from sin. We are delivered from sin, from Satan, from the curse. We are redeemed from every evil work of Satan. We're redeemed from destruction. So let the redeemed of the Lord say what? That I am the redeemed of the Lord. And so God has shown us his ways. I don't think I read you this scripture in uh, Psalms. Yes. No. Just a moment. I, th I think I did read this. Psalms 103.7. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. So he is making known to us his ways so that we can walk in his ways and walk in victory and have the same victory that God has. The only way for us to receive like God is for us to walk in his ways. Praise God. So begin speaking those things that are not as though they already were, and then they will become. Praise God. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for this word. Thank God for this word. Thank God for this revelation knowledge. Father, we don't take that lightly. And I thank God that every person that listens, that this is revelation to them, and that it is producing in each one of your lives in Jesus' name.